Elon Musk just officially opened the insane new Hyperloop. Every day in our mind we speculate about our future, but for instance, let's now think about the future of transportation. And you might dream up the old animated show, The Jetsons, with everyone flying around in personal spaceships. Not only this will ever come to pass, as we are still piling into creaky old subways and buses, but Elon Musk is on a whole other level. He believes in making dreams into reality by making an insane hyperloop. Is it going to change the entire meaning of transportation? How will it affect us? And will it ever succeed? Want to know more about it? Well, stay tuned till the end of the video. Welcome to Elon Musk Rewind. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update on SpaceX, Tesla, Starship, or basically anything related to the multi-talented, influential tech icon and billionaire Elon Musk. Now there are many questions, but first, let's start by answering what is a Hyperloop. A Hyperloop, as you may have heard, is a super-speed ground-level transportation system in which people could travel in a hovering pod inside a vacuum tube at speeds as high as 760 miles per hour, 1,220 kilometers per hour, just shy of the speed of sound. Wergen's system includes magnetic levitation much like the technology used in advanced high-speed rail projects in Japan and Germany. As a vision for fast transportation, vacuum tube transit systems have been around for a surprisingly long time. In 1845, Isambard Kingdom Brunel, an engineer in Britain and the Elon Musk of his time, proposed building a tube in southwest of England that would propel trains at a then dizzying speed of 70 miles per hour, 110 kilometers per hour. The project proved unfeasible due to lack of equipment that would maintain it, and Brunel's concept was abandoned. Despite Brunel's struggles, it was more than a century before Tesla and SpaceX CEO Elon Musk turned the world's attention back to tubular transit technology. Back in 2013, he published a 58-page technical paper that outlined the design of Hyperloop, a solar-powered transportation system which he interpreted as a cross between a Concorde, a railgun, and an air hockey table. Musk asserted that the vehicle could make the 250-mile journey between New York and Washington, D.C. in just 29 minutes, and computed the cost of the infrastructure at $6 billion. He also said that the new transit system should be safer than any current mode of transportation, immune to weather, and reluctant to earthquakes. Elon Musk is talking about a New York to DC Hyperloop that takes 29 minutes, while I can't even go to Brooklyn without packing an overnight bag. Jokes apart, Elon Musk might make this Hyperloop after all. The Tesla and SpaceX CEO is said to be planning to create the Hyperloop portion of his planned underground tunnel-based Hyperloop network himself, rather than counting on outside partners that are already developing commercial Hyperloop technology. The Hyperloop trademark has already been applied for by SpaceX, with a petition date prior to Musk's release of his 2013 research paper, summarizing the design and potential of the transportation technology. But how does a Hyperloop work? Well, in simple words, Hyperloop works by sending passenger and cargo pods through a very low pressure, near vacuum environment, using magnetic levitation to achieve very high speeds over long distances. At its core, a Hyperloop system is all about removing the two things that slow down regular vehicles friction and air resistance. To do away with the former, the pod needs to hover above its track, making the Hyperloop a magnetic levitation, maglev train. To put it in geeky terms, maglev trains use two sets of magnets, one to repel and push the train up off the track, and another set to move the floating train ahead, taking advantage of the lack of friction. Once two sets of magnetic waves are established, they work in tandem to push the vehicle forward. But is there any specific advantage of using maglev trains? The advantage of maglev is that it allows you to go to very high speeds, in addition to having a very nice ride quality. It's like riding on a magic carpet from Aladdin. The super speed of the Hyperloop is attained by drastically minimizing air resistance. Passenger pods move through a low-pressure sealed tube, which contains vacuums that suck out nearly all of the air. By virtue of being in a tube, the system is protected from the weather and can operate in almost any weather condition. Well, these are pretty good benefits of Hyperloop, but there must be few cons faced by them. So what are the difficulties faced by Hyperloop? With the ongoing developments for the Hyperloop, more hurdles and challenges started arising. The problem that arises here is that most design choices made are subjective and suboptimal. The need for objective, open-source research is there to be able to converge to the best possible Hyperloop design. So let's talk over a few barriers faced by the Hyperloop. 
Number 1. Business Case A business case is a feasibility analysis done preliminary to the start of a project. The costs are evaluated against the benefits and in this way, a verdict can be drawn, whether or not to continue with the project. Generally, the project is turned on once the benefits outweigh the costs. For the Hyperloop, such an analysis isn't giving positive results. Number 2. High-Speed Switches Now, in the Hyperloop system, all cores are connected with links. Yet, there are multiple ways to connect to a hub using the links. An option is to directly connect all hubs similar to a metro system. All links pass through the stations, where the pods have to stop. Another option is to use a highway system, using ramps towards and from the station. For the latter option, high-speed switches are required to switch onto the ramps. High-speed switches can be useful for the Hyperloop as it can increase the efficiency of the system and reduce the average travel times. The technological development of high-speed switches is in its infancy and it needs to be proven and no one knows when it will be ready. Number 3. Emergency Exits Emergency exits in some form are expected for the Hyperloop. There are often emergencies that could occur in the tube and people must be evacuated. However, designing an emergency exit system is complex. A Hyperloop has never been created and utilized before, so practical experience and data is not readily available. So, what emergencies are critical and to what emergencies the system needs to be designed is unclear. Number 4. Road to Implementation The Hyperloop is increasing momentum as more and more parties are joining the development. Some of these parties operate open source, however, several parties are more commercial. In the end, the Hyperloop intends to be a mode of transportation connecting different large hubs throughout the continent. To achieve this effectively, there should be one Hyperloop design and a central organ in control of the project. Number 5. Levitation In levitation systems for a Hyperloop, several levitation mechanisms were interpreted. Each one comes with a different guide path and are often not similar with each other. This makes it difficult to develop a tube where more than one levitation mechanism is possible. However, there are still many developments going on regarding levitation mechanisms and guideways. Standardization would bring innovation to a standstill, or at least slow it down. But the major question is, even after all these drawbacks, did it make any progress? Not the Elon Musk one, but November 8, 2020, the Virgin Hyperloop took its first human passengers for a ride. Virgin Hyperloop CEO and co-founder Josh Giegel said, It was probably one of the top two or three most incredible experiences of my life. This idea of getting into something that you and the team created that was really just a concept and here it was in the flesh and in steel and carbon fiber and you're sitting inside of it was really humbling and inspiring. Virgin Hyperloop also released a video showing its vision for a high-speed transportation system in which, it says, will allow passengers to travel at the speeds of 670 miles per hour. The company, which is part of Richard Branson's Virgin Monarchy, claims that this new form of mass transportation will set the standard for 21st century travel by connecting cities in minutes. It's an important achievement for Virgin Hyperloop, which was founded on the premise of making Tesla and SpaceX CEO Elon Musk's vision of a futuristic transportation system of magnetically levitating pods traveling through nearly airless tubes at speeds of up to 760 miles a reality. Now, humanity is facing all sorts of transportation challenges, so why is Hyperloop the right solution? We're looking at moving massive amounts of people at the speed of an aircraft, giving them the opportunity to live where they want to live and work where they want to work. A Hyperloop would move as many people and goods as a 30-lane highway. This is a very big ambition and concept that is yet to become a reality. But now, despite not having first mover advantage, an energetic man like Elon Musk can accomplish anything. He might be the one who solves all the problems in the idea before anyone else. But apart from our expectations and thoughts, what do you think about the Hyperloop? Let us know in the comments below. And most importantly, if you want to be updated on every single topic related to Elon Musk, then you should consider subscribing to the channel and pressing the bell icon. See you in the next one. Until then, peace out.